It's the February show of Purposely Unplugged with uh, Lori Broughton. Lori, it's great to see you. It's been a bit of time since we've talked. We're going to talk choice, voice, and permission today. I have no clue what that's about. You've got to educate me, okay? February tends to be a reflective month where we think about the relationships in our lives. Often it's partners, ex-partners, maybe our kids, our parents. Perhaps it's even really close friends that we just value that are really close to us. And as I look at my practice in the last year, when working through miscommunication with those in our lives, a few topics keep coming up. And those topics are choice, voice, and permission. Okay, uh, great start. So when we talk about choice, let's start right there. It's easy enough. Sometimes we don't make great choices, right? But I think if you being able to say you have a choice, is that the starting point? So often someone will come in and say, you know, I have no choice. I have to say or do whatever this is to maintain a relationship. But in reality, we all do have choices. So a therapeutic relationship can simply help you build confidence, explore what your choices are, and then work through considerations of what those alternatives might look like. When you say that, like, can I get an example? Like, would a, a choice be, you know, I make a meatloaf, my wife doesn't like it, but she'll never tell me? Is yep. it that simple? And how you fold the towels in the bathroom, Dave, it can be that simple. So in all reality... I'm supposed to do that? <laughs> in all reality, we're all so set in our ways, but sometimes one partner feels like they have to do something to keep the peace. Yeah, eat the meatloaf, but never tell them that you really don't like meatloaf. Okay, now let's move on to voice. Now, because this is, a voice can be very powerful. It can be positive and it can be negative. So explain this piece to me. Lots of times a client will say, I can't possibly say how I feel. So what we would do in therapy is just explore different ways to express yourself and practice what that might sound like. You know, our words and our choices are pivotal and working through emotions before you communicate often helps. You know, our message is then delivered in a very different way. Yeah, if you're if you're wound up and you bring up something, right, it, it kind of leads to chaos, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So that calmness, is that what you're, so you're, you're kind of saying? Yeah, you need to be calmer when you have these conversations, correct? Mm -hmm. But if in a relationship you have been arguing for a consistent period of time, and if you felt like your voice is not being heard, then that's where the emotion can come through before the words. And honestly, Dave, our body language speaks louder than our words. That's true. It does. You're, you're not lying there. You, yeah, you pick up on that pretty quickly. Now, the permission part, I'm kind of confused by this because... Are we asking our partner for permission? Are we giving ourselves permission? Like, where does that aspect fit mm -hmm. in? A big concern often a client will say, I'm stuck, or we've had the same argument and we get nowhere. So in a therapeutic relationship, you can explore the scenario and sometimes think about giving yourself permission for an alternative opportunity. And what I mean by that is sometimes we have conversations like, what would it look like for you to give yourself permission not to be angry? And what would it look like to just be a little easier on yourself? Some self-compassion often helps. That's interesting. So I, if you want to play along, let's, let's do, let's do a scenario. Let's, let's talk this through. All right. Um, Lori, I'm upset with you because I don't like the way you fold my towels. Let's use that one. Like you said, for an example. So I'm storming around the house all angry. I'm not making choices, am I? I'm not voicing my opinion in a proper uh, format. And I'm not giving myself permission to, to, to be upset or not be upset about it, to let it go. It's just a little thing. Is that... Does that sort of work through the scenario for an example? It exactly of works through the scenario. And the permission piece might even come from our family of origin, meaning everyone else in the family did it this way. This was the expect expectation my grandmother put on me, then my mother put on me. So how dare you not fold the towels the way that my family's been folding towels for 50 years? So sometimes we come with these things that are bigger and much, much bigger. So if we haven't really worked through voice and worked through choice, and giving yourself permission of, wait a minute, do the towels actually have to be folded that way? 
Like, does this level of perfection need to be lived out for the remainder of my life, but then my children's life and everyone else who observes this conversation? I never even thought of that. So it's it can be that backlog in your life. That can be one of the aspects, correct? That Or other in, outside influences that could, you know, tilt the scale a little bit. The big thing, though, is it's what is what you're saying, and I think we should do another show on this. Is communication? Is it not? Communication really underpins every one of these conversations. You're right. And the other thing too, Dave. Sometimes people are working through the ramification. So we're just coming out of January. I'm still having conversations with clients about the ramifications of Christmas. Meaning, my family has always talked this way, made choices this way, had permissions this way around Christmas. So we're still undoing conversations about how that feels and the ramification of emotion behind all those things so it's not always sometimes just the towels it's sometimes family traditions as well which is where communication ties in so absolutely communication is foundational and you're right maybe we should do a whole show on communication all right well that's that's what we're going to do next month then let's talk communication we don't want to get too far down the road on it how do people get a hold of you if they're interested in talking to you? One I always find the phone is the easiest way. 226-934-7425. I strongly believe that as someone is entering a therapeutic relationship that we just need to spend a few minutes on the phone. You know, hear my voice, get to know me. Let's make sure that what you're facing is something that's within my scope of practice. And if not, then my goal, Dave, is to help someone find the right therapist as well. I'm not going to leave someone hanging. We will find the right therapist. And email is always available or website. So purposefullyunplugged.com. Thanks for doing this today. Great topic. I love when we get into these little conversations and get to sort of talk it through and figure it out ourselves so we can help other folks. So thanks for doing this, Lori. Have a great month. And I can't wait to talk communication Take next care. month.